Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be running NordVPN through my privacy audit. Now keep in mind guys, most VPNs won't be able to price my privacy audit because it's very strict. Unlike security audits or those kind of things ran by other companies, my privacy audit is ran by me and I take a look at stuff like website trackers, mobile trackers, logging policies, if it could pass certain tests, and you know what kind of history the company has in terms of data leaks or anything like that that could have jeopardized your privacy. At the end of this video, we'll show you a comprehensive view of what NordVPN did well and doesn't do well in terms of its privacy and how it could improve in the future. If you decide you still wanna purchase NordVPN or you're interested in NordVPN, you can find a link down in the description down below. Also, you can find the other VPNs that did pass the privacy audit here on the channel in the description down below. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and start off this NordVPN privacy audit. First up, we're gonna be taking a look at some simple things like two-factor authentication and see if NordVPN has that so you can keep privacy on your account and stay and have it be only your account. You could find that option in your account settings like right here, multi-factor authentication, and you can see it here. The cool thing about NordVPN is they also add the ability to use a security key and authenticator app so that's kind of cool kind of unique i haven't seen that authentic security key uh, kind of feature yet i don't think so they also have a handy dandy fact here for more information about that next up we're taking a look at nordvpn's privacy policy to see what's going on behind the scenes unfortunately nordvpn does seem to be using google analytics instead of kind of an open source privacy friendly alternative like some other vpns out there use so that's definitely not something i'm looking for um, in terms of the actual like logs and stuff like that, um, it is a little bit confusing, I would admit. Um, if you look at the logging policy specifically with what is logged with the VPN, they say they don't collect any logs and it's a no log VPN. They don't collect important stuff like timestamps, use bandwidth, traffic logs, or IP addresses, or browsing data. However, that said, NordVPN does collect some minor logs in terms of statistical server load information um, to recommend the most suitable servers. So it's not that concerning. They have user name and timestamp of the last session status, which is automatically deleted after 15 minutes um, to uh, limit the amount of concurrent active user sessions. They also have some connectivity information to prevent abuse and stuff like that. They also have some optional logs that you can opt out of, like application diagnostics, um, anonymized telemetry data um, to help you it just kind of helps them understand how their apps are used as well as some device information um, and device identifiers. Honestly, some of this stuff, I think, um, you know, the opt-in stuff, I could see if people don't care or not. But some of the stuff, I would prefer a little bit less logs here, um, a little bit too many for me. Um, and But it is good to see them being transparent about um, the information here. So that's good at least. In terms of NordVPN on the blacklight test, the website that tests the, the website to see how many trackers are found and third party cookies and stuff like that. I think NordVPN does have a lot of work to do. Seven ad trackers is quite a bit with some linking back to Twitter and Microsoft Corporation. They also have four cookies also linking back to some of these things as well as Google Analytics, like I said. If you guys wanna look up NordVPN on this website, go to themarkup.org slash blacklight and type in NordVPN. So they do still have some work here to do. In terms of Exodus, looking at NordVPN's Android trackers and permission counts, we see most of the basic stuff, Google Analytics, Crash Analytics, Firebase Analytics, and Apps Flyer, um, as well as 16 permissions. I would prefer less permissions and stuff like this probably shouldn't be here. Um, this is mostly kind of standard stuff, but again, um, in terms of all this stuff, in terms of privacy, this is a privacy audit. You know, there are alternatives out there that have less trackers and less permissions and are doing things in a more privacy friendly way. So NordVPN not necessarily doing anything nefarious here, but I do think there is improvements and other workarounds that give people more privacy and not connecting all this stuff to Google. Next up, we could talk about NordVPN's application and if it has any cool privacy features. It does have obfuscated servers with OpenVPN TCP, which is cool. Visibility on LAN, which is actually pretty similar to Surfshark's feature. We also see standard protocol options. If you kind of look around a little bit, you could find the protocols options here. Nordlinks is offer, which is like a WireGuard rebranded version. So that's decent. Overall, a decent application for security and privacy. We could also look at NordVPN's other offerings. They also offer NordPass, which is the password manager, as well as NordLocker. You can get some promo deals on NordVPN's website, I think, with package deals, including some of these options, which is cool. As you can see here, they do have some kind of deals going on or something like that, the ability to add it. So it is an upcharge. 
Um, I would like some of these things kind of to be included. I think that would be a really cool value proposition with NordVPN. Um, so maybe that's something they could think about, but probably won't going to happen because it does give them a little bit more money. Um, so I do like that they do have complimentary privacy services, though. So in terms of Nord's history of privacy and leaks and stuff like that, there was an issue a couple of years ago with some kind of server provider in Finland. So there was this kind of huge issue and it was a pretty big issue at the time. Since then, NordVPN has taken steps like been doing security audits, having a bug bounty program and stuff like that. So they have made steps to improve their security since then. So it's kind of up to you. Some other things to discuss is that NordVPN does not have a history of selling out the company or any company acquisition. You can find their about page here listing some of the history of NordVPN, stuff like that. And I was talking about um, the, the bug bounty program and audits and stuff like that. Overall, though, I think NordVPN could have a better about page, something kind of like similar to Surfshark, listing more employees and stuff like that would be cool. But as far as I could find, the company's never sold. So that's good if you really do trust this company. Overall, does NordVPN pass my privacy audit? Well, for a couple reasons, no. It does need some improvements with removing some of those ad trackers on the website and Android applications. It could have a little bit less logs and fine tune some of those things, even though they're not necessarily nefarious, it still could be more privacy friendly in terms of some of those integrations they have with applications. The application is pretty secure and customizable and they do have complimentary privacy services, which is good and the company's never been sold. However, that said, there is some history of data leaks or data scares that happened in the past, even though NordVPN has kind of tried to implement things to make sure that doesn't happen again. Overall, NordVPN does have some room for improvements. It's not the worst VPN in the world, and a lot of people do like it. It's certainly popular, so it's kind of up to you. Find a link in the description down below if you still want to purchase NordVPN or see some other VPNs that have passed the privacy audit here on the channel. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.